What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Little Sasa Core, the one who never knows the best. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over the Tekken 8 patch notes with you all. As I'm sure you're all aware by now, there was a Tekken Talk live stream the other day. I, I say the other day, I'm not sure exactly when this video is getting posted to the channel, but there is a new version of the game coming out in just a couple of days on April 1st. And in that new version, there's going to be a ton of changes to characters and their moves, not necessarily buffs and nerfs per se, but mostly adjustments some bug fixes some glitches but basically in the live stream they express that a lot of these changes in this patch are going to be things that are fixing unintended behaviors of moves more than anything else i figured that they just didn't really want to do anything too major and like drastically shift the power balance of the game right before evo japan i say right before it's still about a month away but even still, Evil Japan will be happening in April. They probably didn't want to do anything major, but there'll be another update coming in May that will have a lot of actual like balance changes and change the power of a lot of characters. That being said, let's go ahead and get into this. As you can see, we have, you know, there's going to be some stuff about, you know, Eddie and the Tekken shop and everything like that. But what you guys are actually curious about are these bad boys right here. So let's go ahead and get it started. Let me go ahead and bring myself back up. And they even note here in the adjustment policy uh, that this version is mostly about c correcting unintended behavior, but the version that will be happening in May following the conclusion of Evil Japan will primarily focus on buffing characters who haven't been able to fully showcase their uniqueness. However, adjustments to certain moves that exhibit significant strength will also be made. So I'm expecting some dragon off nerfs for sure. Maybe some changes to June, maybe more changes to Azusa. They actually nerfed her while running 3-2, which we'll touch on here shortly, but you guys have already seen if you watched my video talking about the tech and talk, and I'm sure you've seen it on Twitter already. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and dive in. I'm looking through some of these general ones before we get into the character specific stuff. And this one stands out to me where it says corrected an issue where the timing for being unable to break throws after using power crush differed from the rest of the roster for some characters. I said before in my experience, I've had times where like I do a power crush with Huarong and it gets blocked and then my opponent throws me and that throws unbreakable. I haven't seen this happen with any other character and I don't know if that's intended or if it's supposed to be like that for all characters or if it's only like that for some and it's not supposed to, but I've experienced that before. I'm wondering if this is talking about that. It doesn't really say whether or not it's blocked. It just says when it's used. So I don't really know, but we'll see when we get the, the actual version that comes out. Actually, it's probably better if I, if I demonstrate exactly what I mean. To you guys so here i'm in training mode with wadong versus wadong and i have the training dummy set to a standing block and punish and i have him set to do a throw uh, after he blocks as you can see here let's go ahead and tech that real quick but if i go into flamingo right and i do back four which is a power crush when that gets blocked the throw here becomes unbreakable so here's a little bit of water on counterplay for you guys if you didn't know but maybe this isn't counterplay because maybe that's unintended and they're going to fix it so that it's not unbreakable there i don't really know if that's what that means but this is just something i've experienced a few times and i just I, I, it just feels like it shouldn't be that way. Like it feels like a bug, but I don't really know because I don't know why the throw would be unbreakable there. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I could be, I could be tripping, but maybe that actually is a bug. Anyway, speaking of throws, the other note where these like generic changes that they fix an issue which was not possible to break a throw when overlapping an opponent's throw animation while holding one or two. So if you were already holding the button and then you got hit with a throw, the throw window would basically be non-existent. You wouldn't be able to break the throw. That's not the same as counter hit throw, which they are addressing in the next patch, according to Nakatsu and Michael Murray on the Tech and Talk live stream. Uh, but that is another bug that I'm glad they fixed. We're not going to go detail into too many of these other generic changes. So let's go ahead and get into the actual character specific stuff, because I'm sure that's what you guys are the most interested in. So it looks like they made some adjustments to Alyssa's heat smash, adjusted the tracking performance, uh, making it whiff less. Forward, 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 fix an issue where the effect indicating successful input for the damage boost by pressing one at a certain timing during the automatically triggered follow-up on hit was not displayed correctly. So forward, 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 that's this move right here. Okay, and I guess you there's a just frame like on that second hit when it makes contact. Yeah, that did 41 damage. And it says, at a certain timing during the automatically triggered follow-up hit, it was not displayed correctly. Uh, I don't know what the effect is supposed to be. And maybe this supposed to be like a hit spark or something here. But yeah, it does 36 normally. And then with the right timing, it does 41. I guess it's supposed to be like a, maybe it's supposed to get a blue spark or something like that. Probably what that is. This next one is interesting. So her, her back back, uh, what is that? One plus four, fix an issue where the opponent's attack could hit a launched arm. That's her unblockable, right? I can't seem to get, I can't seem to replicate that issue. Maybe it's not a, maybe it's a very random thing that just sometimes happens, but I've tried like jabbing it, launching it, like heat burst, power crush, everything like that. Uh, nothing I'm doing seems to beat it, but yeah, I don't know. That had to be a pretty rare occurrence. I, I thought it would have been funny. At first I thought it said that you can launch. So what I was going to do is like go to back three, the rocket punch and then see if Alyssa went flying. Cause that would have been hilarious. <laughs> uh, fix an issue where only the second hit destructive form landed as a counter hit. 
Uh, then for Asuka, adjusting the opponent's collision detection when this attack hits near a wall, preventing the phenomenon where characters would clip into each other and the positions would swap. Uh, yes, yeah, so as you can see, a lot of these changes are going to be things that are really just behavioral changes that, like they said, just correcting unintended behaviors. We're still going to go through all of this and I'll see if anything stands out and we'll highlight that and talk more about it if there's something I want to go in detail on. But for, for a lot of these things, we'll probably just glance right over them, especially the things that just say behavior and there's no arrow. The ones that say balance and have an arrow up or down are kind of more interesting, I would say. Um, but we'll just go through the list and uh, and see what we find. Um, but anyway, moving on to Azusana during heat, adjusted the opponent's collision detection to make it less likely for opponents to swap when pushing the opponent in the corner and making them block. This is just uh, using her heat smash again. Same thing with like uh, with Asuka and the uh, her, her forward two, except on block as opposed to on hit. But regardless, uh, and then running three two, we've already seen this uh, as it stands right now. Like the counterplay to Azusana's uh, while running three two is basically that you have to sidestep and duck. So you sidestep the mid and then duck the high. Easier said than done, but in the change that we've already seen in, in the video that I uploaded about the Tekken talk, uh, basically now it's easier to step. And also if the three whiffs, the two will not connect. So that just, again, just makes it easier to avoid. Also has three less active frames. Still gonna be plus five on block, but uh, yeah. But as you can see, the duration of the first attack has been reduced by three frames, revised so that the second attack is not executed after the first attack whiffs. Uh, the adjustment was made considering that despite the powerful ability to close the distance quickly, even against distant opponents and the advantage of being able to move first when blocked, the countermeasures through lateral movement were not functioning effectively enough. And yeah, like the move was just way too strong. I play as Usana as a side character. I think she's fun. I think she's cool. But that move was just way overtuned. Uh, then her while crouching one plus two to standardize the controls with other characters, changed to accept inputs from the sixth frame during crouching. Sure thing. Uh, then we have Brian. So during heat, expanded the hitbox to downward to reduce the occurrence of whiffing for certain moves. So that applies to his heat, uh, his heat smash. Is uh, up forward three plus four and quarter circle one four. Quarter circle forward one four, that is. Uh, so that would just be, so his heat smash, that would just sometimes whiff, uh, you know what I'm saying? You see how like that first hit kind of connected. They expanded the hitbox downward uh, so that that connects more often, I guess. It is a mid, so it's supposed to hit relatively low, I guess. Um, not on the ground, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, then also his up three plus four, so that move as well has an extended downward hit uh, hitbox. And then quarter circle was at two four. Yeah, that move as well. Uh, I'm going to assume I accidentally did a fisherman slam. Uh, moving on, his up forward 1113, and then during Snake Eyes, the up forward, or not, sorry, 1, uh, 2, up forward 2223, two, two, three, and then up forward 2222, two, 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 uh, which is the, and then the kick he does at the end. Not his down forward 11112 or whatever, but uh, you know the wall combo. Uh, this changes to make it less likely for the opponents to be blown away in the opposite direction. I guess that was happening sometimes, so Brian players weren't getting their proper wall combo. Uh, adjusted the behavior of both characters when pairing the opponent's right punch attack making it less likely for the counterattack move to whiff. So that's with his punch parry. Uh, then his wild rising two changes so that it is no longer transitions into a throw move after a hit during a KO. Uh, so that's Fisherman Slam. I actually hadn't seen that happen before, uh, but it's fixed now. Uh, Claudio four, three plus four. The issue where performing certain inputs resulted in unintended moves has been fixed uh, during starburst his forward, forward, forward. So as while running one plus two, uh, the opponent's ability to start moving after being cornered and blocking was quicker than intended and has been corrected. As a result of this adjustment, Regardless of the standing position within the stage, Claudio's from adventure when blocked is now eight frames. The collision detection with the opponent has been adjusted to make it easier for the opponent who evaded this attack by crouching to land a punish. Let me go ahead and see if I can uh, actually just jump into training mode again and see what this move is currently on block. They say now it's just always going to be plus eight. Uh, is there situations where it just wasn't doing that before, I guess? Uh, so let's just go ahead and activate Starburst. We'll just use this move real quick. I guess I could have just gone in the heat. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. Um, but it's is while running one plus two, right? So should actually make it or block. Uh, so let's go ahead and check this out. So during Starburst, uh, while running one plus two, plus eight. That was only plus three. Yeah, okay, so it was the wall was making it so that, oh yeah, that one time it was plus six. Well, my Starburst ran out of it. I guess they just wanted to always be plus eight and at the wall it was not giving them that plus eight, so. Don't know if he needed it, but sure. Uh, while rising one, two, and during starburst, while rising one, two, due to instances where the positioning between the opponent and the wall became misaligned when hitting near the wall, adjustments were made to the collision detection. The issue where the size of the attack hitbox varied depending on if player had starburst or not has been corrected. So the hitbox was actually different depending whether or not you had starburst, and now it's still gonna be the same no matter what, okay. Uh, then we have Devil Jin. Uh, so crouch dash one up forward, I believe that's his heaven's door. Uh, fix an issue where damage scaling and correction values for the opponent's launch distance and aerial combos would sometimes reset after hitting with this attack. Uh, so basically just getting rid of some extra damage that he wasn't supposed to have. Then during morning, uh, during morning crow 2-2, two, two, 
alleviated an issue where the positional relationship with the opponent becomes different than intended when used near the wall. So again, just fixing some wall stuff. Uh, then Dragonov, we actually have a couple of nerfs here. I see some downward arrows. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, his Heat Smash adjusted the tracking performance of the move so that the second attack is less likely to connect when the first attack is evaded. I don't know if I have any clips of this and I don't know if I'm going to be able to replicate it because obviously replicating things like that is all, always difficult in training mode. But like there'd be times when you would step or avoid Dragonov's like the first hit of the Heat Smash and he would just auto correct and just like just, just dash towards like it is weird. I don't I need to see if I can find a clip of it by chance. All right, so this isn't exactly what I'm looking for, but this also kind of gives you an idea where it's like, there's just weird behaviors that happens with Dragonov's Heat Smash. I just want you to see what happens in this clip here. I'm gonna mute it actually, but it just, you see the way he's just zipping and flipping, zooming away and then it just, uh, and then you also have this example right here where he just zooms away after it whiffs and it's just, yeah, it's, it's just weird. Yeah, just some really weird behaviors going on with Dragonov's Heat Smash. Hopefully all that's been corrected, whether he's zooming away from you or toward you. Uh, then forward one plus two, as well as uh, down forward one. Uh, the issue where performing certain inputs resulted in unintended moves has been fixed. Uh, then we have his down forward four. Adjusted the collision detection with the opponents, make it less likely for a counterattack to miss when absorbing this attack with a power crush. So wait, was Dragonov just not, was he just getting away with not getting counter hit by power crushes when he used that move? I, I, I guess that's what that means. This one right here, interesting. His up forward one plus two, increased the recovery time for Dragonov after successfully connecting with a throw. This adjustment is made considering unexpected follow-up hits that occurred. Uh, so let me actually jump into training real quick and demonstrate what this one is. So Dragonov's up forward one plus two throw, whoops, not that, is actually uh, this move right here, right? 45 damage throw, it's it's a nightmare to get hit by. I'm sure we've all been hit by it plenty of times, right? But what you may or may not also know is that he gets a guaranteed back four here after this, which doesn't seem like much, but yeah, that, that 15 damage, as that's 60 damage off of a throw, kind of crazy. Now granted, there's other crazy scenarios where like you might fight King or Huarang or uh, several characters and they get full combo off the throw or the, whatever, whatever. I just don't think he was meant to get that. Like, I just don't think that was like an intended follow for him to have there for that to be guaranteed. So I guess they're taking that away. I don't know if it's actually like guaranteed, guaranteed, but that's, yeah, I, I haven't labbed it out myself. I just know that it's a thing. Uh, so anyway, moving on. And then we have time with opponent low tack, his down one plus two, adjusted the input reception to make it easier to perform moves even from a crouching position. So that's just his parry. Uh, then moving on, we have Fang and his down back three. The attack hitbox has been expanded downward to mitigate the occurrence of whiffing against certain moves. And to alleviate the phenomenon of evading some of the opponent's mid attacks, adjustments have been made to expand the hurtbox and to adjust the collision detection with the opponent. Uh, so this looks like, so I see why they have the arrow. This is the buff enter. Like, so as I'm reading here, trying to figure out what it is, right? Okay, so first of all, let me jump into training mode and demonstrate this move real quick. So if we jump over to training mode, just so you guys can see first and foremost what his, uh, what his down back three is, it's this move right here, right? And this move would sometimes crush mids. Right, which is something that you really only see with like Xiao Yu and even her doing is kind of insane, but this move would like go under mids and I guess they're making it so that it doesn't really do that anymore, but it's going to more consistently hit and it's gonna hit even lower so that it actually makes contact basically more consistently. So it's like, there's a trade off there. It's a buff and a nerf, a burf, if you will, as LK would call it. Um, but yeah, I don't know like which characters and scenarios and moves in specific that this move would miss on, but it should be doing that less while trading off of the fact that it's not gonna be going under mids, which, I'll take that personally as a Fang fighter, not as a Fang player. <laughs> anyway, back to it. Now we have some Huarong changes. So when heat activation is available, adjusted the collision detection with the opponent to make it easier to hit opponents in a low position. I'm assuming that just means it's going to ha have like a lower hitbox or is going to hit like close to the ground. Uh, Cause I've had times where my opponent like goes under, it, I, I can really only think of like fighting Shao Yu when it happens and like AOP going under my heat burst, which like, okay, I understand evasion is Shao Yu's whole thing. Like, hold on, let, let, matter of fact, can I, can I demonstrate this in training mode real quick? Okay, so yeah, th this right here, this, this, this gotta stop. I understand evasion and everything is like her whole thing. Like, I get it, that's her identity, it's part of her kit, but come on. <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't happen anymore after this patch. So anyway, back to the notes, we have three piano four and during right flamingo, piano three, four, enhance the tracking ability of the second hit when the first hit makes contact with the opponent. This adjustment is made to mitigate the occurrence of attacks whiffing partway through, thank you. And fix the issue where the powered up version can be triggered by inputting quickly, cannot be executed while moving sideways. So for Huarong, that is this move right here where you just uh, piano three, four real quick and you get this little kick and then also some right flamingo, the same move as well. There's also a just frame version of this where you get a blue spark. I I can't do it on command. That is just as hard for me as a, as a just frame skyrocket, which funnily enough, I could probably do a just frame skyrocket faster than I could. Yeah, <laughs> then I actually do the uh, do that move. But um, yeah, there is a blue spark here. I'm not going to try to demonstrate it, uh, but there would just be times where like the first hit will connect and the second hit won't. Um, and yeah, that just won't be happening as much. 
uh, anymore. And also, I didn't know about the sidestep part where like if you're moving sideways, whatever, like the blue spark version just couldn't happen. But now it'll be able to happen. So that's cool. Uh, anyway, back to the notes. There's also during right stance to four. The issue where performing certain inputs resulted in unintended moves has been fixed. I'm not really sure what they mean by that during right stance to four. So that's, you know, that's just doing like the, you know, the jab, the, the high, high, like here, this, this move, right? This right here that I don't do enough. But um, I don't really know what the unintended moves were. Anyway, back to the notes, we have some jack changes. So down forward to one and uh, down forward to one hold. Expanded the hurt box for the opponent's counterattack to be more likely to connect after the attack ends. And then his uh, his crouching one plus two to standardize the controls with other characters, change uh, to accept inputs from the sixth frame during crouching. We saw that earlier for what was that? Azusana had something just like that with her crouching one plus two, I believe. Yeah, it was the same thing with Azusana's crouching one plus two. Uh, so I guess down forward to one is going to be easier to whiff punish. Uh, this is just made in line with other characters. And then during Gamma, how the attack duration has been reduced by one frame, sure. To minimize the impact on aerial combos, the hitbox size has been increased only on the final frame of the attack. And this correction is made in consideration of an issue where anomalies occurred in the animation when hit connector at the latter part of the attack's duration and a heat dash was performed. Uh, Gamma Hound 3 plus 4, the behavior after crouching block has been adjusted to match the standing block, fixing the inconsistency, sure. It uh, looks like they also adjusted his crouching throws. This change was made to allow the moves to be executed with down back 1 plus 3 or down back 2 plus 4 uh, for consistency with other characters. I guess he just couldn't do that. He had to be strict about his down input. And then we move on to Jin. Uh, so heat smash, the distance between the character and the opponent after the first hit has been shortened when it connects. This adjustment aims to alleviate the issue of the move whiffing partway through. Uh, so... Technically, I mean, I guess it's a bug fix, but a slight buff for Jin players. I don't, I don't know how often that's been happening to you guys, but that should be happening a lot less. Uh, forward one plus two, the issue where performing certain inputs result in unintended moves has been fixed. Uh, then back two has been buffed. The hitbox of the attack has been expanded downward to mitigate the occurrence of whiffing in midair combos, contrary to visual representation. Uh, then you have back forward two, the issue where this move cannot be performed immediately after the activation of heat or heat dash has been fixed. So he was just straight up just locked out of this move, which is weird, uh, but it looks like they fixed that. You have while rising one two. The damage distribution has been changed from ten and sixteen to seven and nineteen, which I don't really know why that matters. The modification was made to address the difference in damage for the first hit between using while rising one three and using this move. Yeah, I'm gonna need some insight on a gen player from that one because I don't really get why that matters. But sure. Uh, then we move on to June. Her heat smash. The issue where health was recovering when both the first and second hits whiffed has been corrected. I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen June's heat smash whiff ever. So, uh, but I guess you won't recover health if it does whiff now. The thing is though, health recovery intended to only incur on hit or block. She's still recovering on block. I ain't never seen it whiff. It always gets blocked unless it hits and she's recovering the health either way. So I ain't gonna lie, that kind of feels like a nothing change. They call it a nerf, but adjustments for the tracking the second hit will be made in the next update. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, now you got me. Now you got me, now you got me. Because that second hit, I didn't made the first hit with, but the second part, that follow up, the range is crazy and the tracking is crazy. That's the reason why it never whips. I, I can sidestep the sidewalk the first hit. I didn't got that part to whip, but you still got a block because that second part is coming for you. That follow up it will, will blow you to pieces and recover a large chunk of her health bar. But in the next update, they'll be taking a look at that. So then this might actually matter, which to me, like June's heat smash is the most egregious thing about the character. If you tone that down a little bit, I think the character is mostly fine. I don't really see too many people talking about her too much now. She still seems pretty strong, um, but she's not like dominating the game the way some other characters are. And I, I say let her rock for the most part, unless something else that's like actually game breaker and something shows up. Uh, then you have three plus four. When activated against an opponent in a down state and it is blocked, the recovery time has been increased by six frames. Damn. This adjustment is made to match the frame advantage with the regular block situation. Fix an issue where character animations would occasionally not play correctly. Uh, then you have 4-2, her Tooth Fairy, same exact change it looks like as Asuka's where you would sometimes get that accidental side swap. And you have while crouching down forward one. The behavior after crouch blocking, uh, crouching block have been adjusted to match the standing block, fixing the inconsistency. Uh, and then you have Kazuya. Uh, first change is his 1-1-2, which is his 10 frame punish, adjusted the collision detection with the opponent to reduce the occurrence of whiffing for certain moves. And then his double form 1-1-2. Um, I guess this was just missing on certain characters or in certain situations when it shouldn't be. Uh, that's all I can think of. Uh, then we have during double form crouch dash one and the health sweep, uh, fix an issue where damage scaling and correction values for the opponent's launch distance and aerial combos would sometimes reset after hitting with this attack. So it's the same thing as like, uh, with devil gin earlier and made slight adjustments to character animations and input recognition to ensure proper damage scaling calculations. Okay. So they're calling it a nerf, but that seems just more like correcting intended behavior, which is the whole MO for this entire patch, but sure. Moving on, we have King. 
Uh, during heat, his heat smash fixed an issue where stage gimmicks did not activate correctly when the follow-up attack hit after the first attack missed. I ain't gonna lie, Loki, you could have left his like that. I feel like I feel like I need to see some other changes with his heat smash, and I need to see some arrows going down. But that's just me. That's just me. Uh, then we have down back four and during Jaguar sprint four, corrected King's state after the back or after the attack from crouching to midair, adjusted uh, uh adjusted as punch received after being blocked was different than intended. Uh, then you have down back one plus two four, adjusted to transition to a throw even if it hits off axis. I actually was on the training, but I have no clue what move this is. So it said down back one plus two four. Oh, that, that, okay. So yeah, that wasn't transitioning into a throw when it was off axis. Okay, well now it is. Um. Uh, Jaguar Sprint 3 expanded the hurt box, alleviating situations where certain attacks would whiff. Uh, so it's going to be easier to punish that. Uh, and then approach. Uh, then you have approach opponent. Uh, so it's quarter circle back 1 plus 2. Relax the input window of 1 plus 2 to make it easier to execute. I don't really know if he needed that. I feel like King's already kind of easy, and that's not a particularly difficult throw to do. That's just the. Uh, is, is that the one I think it is? Hold on, let me just go and try this real quick. Yeah, no, that's. Is anybody having problems doing this move? Maybe depending on the situation, obviously everything is easy in training mode, but I just feel like I just feel like that was <laughs> unnecessary. But what do I know? Um, and then while the opponent is on back by opponent's feet, uh, the down back one plus uh, three fix an issue where it was not possible to perform a floor break with this move. Sure, man. Uh, approach airborne opponent during double heel hold one plus two, one plus two. Fix an issue where damage scaling and correction values for the opponent's launch distance and comes would sometimes reset after hitting with this attack. Uh, so again, same thing as uh, Kazuya and Devil Jin. And then we move on to the bears. We have Kuma and Panda. Uh, Kuma, during heat, the heat smash has been adjusted so that the position relationship with the opponent is less likely to shift, causing the second hit to whiff when hitting near the wall. Uh, then Panda, during heat, the inconsistency and in properties of the attack when done from hunting and during normal stance has been fixed. Uh, same thing goes with heat activated during hunting uh, the the heat smash uh, up forward three plus four change the opponent's behavior upon hit adjusted based on the situation where in specific conditions hitting would put panda at a disadvantage. Okay, I don't really know notations about the bears at all, so I have no clue what move that is. But frankly, the bears deserve nothing. Um, so you probably could have left that as it was. But let's go ahead and at least see with this move. But apparently, sometimes on hit they would actually be at a disadvantage. I don't know if that's something I'd be able to replicate right now, but. Go ahead, jump on over to training mode, and it's what was it? Up forward three plus four, so the plus ten. It says in specific conditions. I have no idea what those conditions are, but I guess there were just times where it just was actually being minus on hit, which is kind of weird. So rightfully so, it's been fixed, but whatever. Uh, fix an issue where the number of attacks, uh, the number of attack hits increase more than intended when extending the rotation with forward forward. The behavior after crouching block have been adjusted to match the standing block, fixing the inconsistency. Uh, while crouching three plus four to standardize controls of the characters, right, right, right. Um, we've seen this change multiple times so far. And then Panda during hunting down uh, one plus two, increase the size of the hitbox when attacking with this command while using Panda. The hitbox size for this attack was different between Kuma and Panda, so it has been unified to the larger and more easily connectable size of Kuma. So Panda was getting away just a little bit more, which is like we see this all the time with the bears where they have funky hitboxes and they just don't work the same as other characters. Certain combos don't work and then other combos work only on them. And yeah, I guess there were even things that weren't working between Panda and Kuma that things were different, but now it's the same, um, at least as it pertains to that move in particular. So whatever. Uh, Lars, during heat and limited entry one, adjusted to transition to a throw even if it hits off axis. So similar to, to King's change that we saw earlier. Uh, dynamic entry three, increase the opponent's recovery time when blocked by two frames. So it's now two more frames plus. And adjustments have been made considering that when executing a rage art, all options on Lars' side were losing. And he deserved it. And he deserved it. They should all be losing. <laughs> and that's it for Lars. Then we have Law, who's right up there with Lars, where you won't really deserve a whole lot. But forward three plus four corrected us so that when performing this move with the four three plus four command during dragon charge it no longer branches into unexpected moves in certain situations we have up forward four three the behavior on landing a down hit has been modified when the first hit connects with a downed opponent the second hit would also connect causing more combo damage than intended this has been adjusted uh so yeah that hit was the that string was just connecting when it shouldn't giving him some extra damage there making it so that it's not guaranteed uh then you have during dragon charge four two the issue where performing certain inputs resulted in unintended moves has been fixed uh, then you that's it for law actually I thought there was gonna be more but now we move on to Lee uh, during heat while crouching down forward down forward three that's a slide right change the damage from 25 to 23 so that's a nerf well obviously there's an arrow there uh, pointing downward for a reason Duh. Uh, for the heat state only corrected an issue where damage higher than that of successfully performing a difficult input was incorrectly assigned to the standard input and then you have a uh, hitman up four the recovery time has been increased by two frames 
The recovery time inflicted on the opponent when this move uh, hits on the ground has been increased by two frames. The, direction, the duration of the attack has been reduced by two frames, and the hitbox has been expanded downward to make it easier to connect with opponents in a down state. This change has been made in consideration of situations where unexpected follow-up attacks were landing. So again, he was getting uh, damage and follow-ups that weren't intended, and they're taking that away from him. And then we move on to Leo. Now, I don't speak the language, so forgive my pronunciations, but Fobu 1 plus 2, uh, this, this addresses the issue where after absorbing the opponent's attack and hitting them with this move to trigger heat, it was not possible to wall splat the opponent. Uh, so it's a slight buff for Leo, going to more consistently get the wall splat there. Uh, Baoju uh, succeeds four. Uh, this fixes the issue where, despite being in the attack animation during a successful parry, the reduction of the heat timer was not halted. They're calling that a buff, but that just sounds more like a bug fix to me. And then that's it for Leo. And then we move on to Leroy. Heat smash. The opponent's facing direction during block has been adjusted to face forward. This addresses situations where, depending on conditions and angles, the character can maneuver to the opponent's back, making the second hit unblockable, which is unintended behavior that is being corrected. A slight nerf in, in, a, in a way to Leroy, but you know what I'm saying? He didn't we weren't supposed to add that. And then you have uh, during Heat Hermit uh, 2 plus th uh, 2 plus 3, uh, this move has been modified to be unblockable by attack reversal or power crush. This change is based on the fact that uh, the attributes commonly set for Heat Smashes were not assigned to this move. Oh, so, so again, this is just heat smash. Um, oh, right, right, right. Because heat smashes and stuff, like they, they they beat reversals and power crushes and stuff. And I guess his just wasn't consistently doing that, uh, which is weird, but it's doing it now. And then you have uh, his down forward one. Uh, even when hitting from the side, the connected moves are not corrected to hit continuously, similar to when hitting from the front. Hit it from the front, hit it from the back. You feel me? Lily, uh, her heat smash alleviated an issue where the positional relationship with the opponent becomes different than intended when used near the wall. And that's it for Lily. Uh, only one change for Paul. Uh, back two and back three expand. Oh, I guess technically that's two, but expanding the hitbox downward to reduce the occurrence of whiffing for certain moves. So just slight hitbox bust for him. Uh, Ravens one jab expanded the hurt box, alleviating situations where certain attacks would whiff. <laughs> Yo, they nerfed Ravens jab. I'm here for it. Whatever. Uh, then you have running three. Fix an issue where, despite the animation facing away from the opponent, the character could still block the opponent's counterattack as if facing forward when the move missed. Uh, sure. Then you have during heat while running three on block or four. Uh, fix an issue where the heat timer was not recovering upon hitting. Again, they're labeling that a buff. This sounds more like a, a fix, but whatever. Uh, Rain is heat smash exclusively for opponents performing side ukemi, reducing the tracking ability when using it. This adjustment was made considering cases where the position relationship with the opponent near the wall became awkward when using against their side ukemi. That's a really specific situation that I've never seen. I don't really see ukemi that much. Most players I fight, they just spring kick or, or like, you know, get up kick or whatever, but that, that's, that's a thing, I suppose. Uh, then during rage down forward one plus two adjusted the hitbox and opponent collision detection for certain moves to make whiffing less likely. I believe that's just her rage art. Uh, then while rising two during front hit on ground corrected an issue where the collision detection with the opponent was not functioning correctly, leading to the exchange of positions in certain situations. Um, so similar to like the Asuka and June stuff where they were, you were just swapping positions when it wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, then you have during wind god step down forward four two adjusted the tracking ability of the move to address cases where the second hit displayed unnatural tracking when the first hit missed. So just nerfing the tracking on that move a little bit. Uh, so that would be her, her hell sweep, right? The hell sweep into the punch. They nerfed the tracking on that. Uh, then during heaven's wrath three on hit or block four modified the move to ensure that it cannot be defended against with attack reversal the tribute comments moves that yeah same thing like with leroy that we just saw uh and then it looks like they nerfed all of her throws so what do we have going on here the recovery frames after a successful throw escape were not properly aligned with the standard setting so the following changes were made reduce opponents recovery frames by three frames and reduce opponents recovery frames by six frames um uh, so I actually didn't know. I, I I didn't understand this at first, but now that I I'm, I kept rereading, it, I understand she was basically recovering faster than other people were, or like opponents were recovering slower after breaking throws. Like if you broke Randa's throw, your recovery frames would be slower, or there would be more of them than when you break other characters' throws. Which is, I didn't know that, but that was news to me. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Next we have Shaheen, who I know very very little about, but he only has a couple of changes here. So we have his down back to one, increase the size of the hitbox to mitigate the issue where the second hit whiffs after the first hit connects. So just you know. Slight adjustment on the hitbox so that string actually connects more consistently. And then stealth stealth step forward. Try saying that five times fast. Expand the hurtbox alleviating situations where certain attacks would whiff. So similar thing uh, as we've seen with other characters where this is, should just be easier to whiff punish now, I guess. Steve, heat smash change. Adjusted the tracking of the seventh hit to reduce occurrences of the attack whiffing mid animation. And then his ducking one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, change the opponent's behavior upon hit to reduce the likelihood of unintended whiffing when activated in the corner of the stage. Then we have Victor. We have uh, down 1-1, one, one, expanded the hurt box, alleviating situations where certain attacks would whiff. Um, and then we have down back 4 on counter hit, adjusted the character's orientation after a counter hit to reduce the likelihood of unintended whiffing. 
I haven't really experienced that issue much when I've played Victor, but I haven't been playing him a ton lately. Uh, I've been just, I've, I've really just uh, locked in and focused on Huadong. Like I had several characters I've been learning um, and playing and like when I'm playing with the homies, like I'll, I'll rotate between them a little bit. But when it comes to like me actually like grinding the game and learning and playing any rank matches and stuff, it's mostly been that. Although, I, like I said, I did play a little bit of Reyna uh, not too long ago, but neither here nor there. Uh, then we have uh, while crouching one plus two to standardize controls the other. Yeah, except in plus six frame, seen that same change. And then the during perfumer down forward expanded the hurt box, alleviating situations where certain attacks would whiff. Uh, so slight nerf to that, uh, making it easier for him to get hit. And we have Xiao Yu, uh, who I don't know a ton about, but time with opponent attacks for her parry adjusted the opponent's facing direction to be forward when parrying their right kick attack. Fix an issue where back facing opponent uh, down back or not down back, but just down one can make contact with the opponent's back, rendering it unblockable. So that was not intended and they're taking that away. Uh, then we have a slew of Yoshi changes. So a uh, rage art expanded the hitbox to reduce the occurrence of whiffing for certain moves. Uh, then just as one jab, change the opponent's behavior so that after a certain amount of time has passed after the hit, the opponent becomes able to block. This correction is made in consideration that during heat, flash can hit continuously in certain situations. I didn't know about that, but now I do. Uh, then we have up back one plus two during Muto Kwame up back one plus two. So that is, is this the big sword slash that he does? So that is this move. Uh, right here, I had to go into training mode and get Yoshimitsu out because I don't really know a lot of his commands off top. So up back one plus two, expanding the hurt box, alleviating situations where certain attacks would whiff. The issue where performing certain inputs results in unintended moves has been fixed as well. All right. And then we have we go back over here. We have uh, up three plus four, which is the little teleport flip kick thing that he does. Fixed so that floor break occurs on the final hit. The floor break was occurring during the middle of the string, resulting in less damage than intended, prompting this adjustment. Uh, so he's actually able to use this as a floor break move now in combos, which will obviously benefit him damage wise. And then you have the up forward uh, three plus four and up or no up forward three plus four three, which is what move is that? Go back to training mode real quick. So up forward three plus four three. No, not that. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then time with one and attack one plus two. Let's go back. See. So that was in line with the uh, the up three plus four. So it's the same thing with that move. That move also now should floor break, I guess. Oh, okay, I see. I messed up the input before. I'm looking in training mode now. So this, no, not that. So a, there you go, that. So now that will floor break. Okay, and then time with opponent attack, uh, the one plus two, um, that will also floor break, I suppose now as well. Then we have the uh, up forward, um, we have up forward one plus three, as well as uh, forward forward three plus four one plus two corrected the unnatural positioning issue when activating the move near a cornered opponent causing an awkward collision with the wall. Uh, so that would be uh, his flight stance. Yeah. So his helicopter um, where he goes to like the top of the screen, I guess. So that's this move right here. And then the forward forward three plus four one plus two. Oh, that move. Okay. Uh, so let me go back to the notes we have here. Uh, running three, expanding the hitbox downward to reduce the occurrence of whiffing on certain moves uh, while crouching one plus four uh, and during Muto no Kiwami while crouching one plus four to standardize the controls with other characters change to accept inputs from the sixth frame during crouching uh, back facing opponent. Uh, so back turn uh, down one. The issue where performing certain inputs resulted in unintended moves has been fixed. Uh, then we have uh, several things during Manji fly or during Manji dragonfly. So uh, we have first of all, let me just go into training mode and see these in real time for myself. Um, so the first one is during Manji Dragonfly 3, in specific situations where the anticipated tactics were not working as intended, move status has been changed to treat it as a jump until landing. This alteration allows the character to evade low attacks and special low attacks from the opponent. So we're down jabs and it says in specific situations, but we're down jabs and some lows actually hitting him out of this, I guess is what, what that's saying. Uh, then we have during Manji Dragon Fly 4, uh, which is the mid kick, uh, an issue where the opponent's behavior upon getting hit in a down state after the conclusion of the heat state was deviating from the intended behavior has been rectified. Uh, then you have Manji Dragon Fly forward 1 plus 2, which is this annoying ass move right here, this, this spinning thing. It's all highs. However, uh, this is interesting. So let's take a look at the notes. It says the opponent's behavior on blocking the second hit has been modified and they will now block continuously until the third hit. But when the opponent blocks the second hit and attempts to crouch to evade the third hit, the attack was hitting them. This change was made to alleviate this issue. So wait, as I'm reading this, I don't understand. So the opponent's behavior on blocking the second has been modified and they will now block continuously until the third hit. 
Well, I guess, hold on. So what is this on block? Is, I, is, is that a good or bad thing? Hold on quickly. I, I actually don't know how negative this is on block. I know it's not plus, but I don't know the exact frame data on it. Now's as good as time as any to learn, I suppose. But it's only minus two. So that sounds like a buff, but they have a downward arrow here because if you're only minus two, that's better than get, that it getting crouched and you getting launch punished, right? Because if I'm Huo and I I could go for just, you know, while standing three or while standing four, four, or like, you know, while standing two, three or any other character that has like a while standing launcher, right? Um, so there's something I'm, I'm not understanding here. When the opponent blocks the second hit, and attempts to crouch to evade the third hit, the attack was hitting them. This change was made to alleviate this issue. Uh, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're actually going to uh, swap characters real quick. We're gonna I'll just take Arang, I guess, and then we're gonna make Yoshi the other character. There might be an easier way of doing this, but I'm just not that adept at using training mode, but I think I have a idea of how I'm gonna test. I, I, Cause I need to see, cause I don't, I don't quite understand what it's saying. So I'm gonna go into practice settings, defense, uh, CPU action, record. Boom, uh, bam, 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 finish, cool, okay. And now, uh, okay, right, so I block it, I'm plus two, do it again. Oh, you get hit if you try to crouch, which doesn't make sense because if you block the second hit and then try to crouch the third hit, you're actually getting hit. Now they're making it so that if you block the second hit, you'll just have to you just have to hold the third hit. So I guess they're making it so that it jails. Um, but either way, like you're not getting hit, so you're better off. Like if it's it's better if you just crouch the entire thing, like from the beginning, right? So I just you know what I'm saying? Just do something like that. But it's uh you weren't able to do that before because if you try to crouch, you would get hit. So obviously you just want to be able to punish this. I don't I don't know the combo because while standing two three sucks, but um yeah, okay, I, I see. I see how that's actually for the better. Uh all right, all right, so back to the notes. Uh but yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for Yoshimitsu. And then we move on to Safina, and it looks like her rage art has an expanded hitbox to reduce the occurrence of whiffing for certain moves. And then uh we have several changes here for several moves. Well, we have several moves that are receiving the same change here where they're getting buffed, it seems. The amount of damage inflicted on oneself when using Azazel's power has been reduced. This change aimed to alleviate situations where the drawbacks of each technique were greater than anticipated. So that's a good buff for her, where she's actually uh losing less health uh for using uh these moves. So so that would be on her forward one plus two, her down forward uh four one, uh back one during hit from the front one plus two, scarecrow two one. Uh, Scarecrow down forward one, uh, Tarantula down forward one, Mantis down forward one, and then her parry, it looks like. Um, and that's all of the changes. So, uh, obviously, I, I'm not an expert, right? I'm only but so knowledgeable. I only know so, mu so much about, you know, the entire game and the characters and everything like that. But like I said, th these aren't like drastic like buffs and nerfs, really. This is mostly just uh, overall fixes for the most part to characters and, and just moves working more how they were intended to work in the first place. Um, but yeah, man, uh, Yoshi he got some interesting changes where he's getting more damage and buffs and nerfs to flash. But I just uh, seemingly he's flash from crouch. And then also, like, I, I, I don't I don't like the idea of Yoshimitsu, Yoshimitsu getting any stronger than he already is. But that's that's just me. That's just me. Uh, you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay tuned for all this content when I'm bringing you. With all of being said, it's pretty much off today. And remember, that's going to happen to you. Swing the bat. Later.